In this section, we'd like to derive the conservation of the angular momentums. Angular momentum L is defined mu r cross r dot. So angular momentum using the cross product. This is cross product. Then find the derivative with respect to times. So substitute this form is here. Then mu r dot cross r dot plus mu r cross r2 dot. So this is cross product with the same vector becomes zero. And then mu r cross r2 dot. So this is equal to r cross mu r2 dot. So mu r2 dot you can substitute here. Then it becomes uh, this terms. Then now we have a, a cross product and the r and r. And it becomes zero. So derivative of the angular momentum becomes zero. So angular momentum is conserved. So angular momentum is conserved quantities. So L doesn't change. So particles have to move on the planes. So particles have to move on the planes. The angular momentum, this L doesn't change. Okay, then we'd like to express the angular momentum with a polar coordinate. So Cartesian coordinate, we use x and y. And the polar coordinate, instead of x and y, we use r and theta. With x equal r cosine theta, y equal r sine theta. And if you know the Cartesian coordinate, you can express the r equal square root, x square plus y square and tangent theta is uh, y over x. So you can easily convert from the Cartesian to the polar coordinate and the polar coordinate to the Cartesian coordinate. And the unit vectors in the Cartesian coordinate is uh, e sub x, is a uh, magnitude of the e sub x is once and directed on the x-axis and e sub y is also magnitude of is once and directed on the y-axis. And the e sub r is directed on the r radial vectors e sub r and also magnitude of e sub r is one. And the e sub theta is also magnitude of e sub theta is once and it's perpendicular with respect to the er and the direction of the e theta is directed the increase of the thetas. And we would like to convert from er and e theta to the ex ey, or ex ey to the er e theta. So this is the first practice also similar, express the e theta with the ex and the e sub y. And I'd like to show you the how to get this. And the e sub r should be expressed two vectors, e sub x and e sub y. And we will find out the a and the b. And if you consider a scalar product with a e sub x, e sub x dot e sub r, a e sub x dot e sub x, plus b, e sub x dot e sub y. So magnitude of e sub x is 1, this is 1. e sub x and e sub y is perpendicular, scalar product becomes 0. So from the, this equation, you can find a. It becomes e sub x dot scalar product, e sub r. Also, you can consider the scalar product with the e sub y, e sub y dot e sub r becomes a e sub y dot e sub x plus b e sub y dot e sub y. 
so this becomes 0 this becomes 1 so it becomes B okay so E sub R can be expressed E sub R dot E sub X E sub X plus E sub R E sub Y E sub Y also same reasons we can express E sub theta also E sub theta dot E sub X E sub X plus E sub theta dot E sub Y E sub Y okay then I'd like to write and the Cartesian coordinate x and the y so this is e e sub x e sub y then this is gonna be e sub r e sub theta then this is gonna be theta so e sub r e sub x this becomes uh, if you use a definition of the scalar product e sub r e sub x cosine theta this is one this is one so it becomes cosine theta this part e sub r e sub y this part is a pi over 2 minus theta so this is cosine pi over 2 minus theta. So this is equal to the sine theta. So E sub R is expressed cosine theta plus sine theta E sub Y. This is E sub X. Okay. The E sub theta, this part, E sub theta and E sub X. So this is uh, actually this is going to be theta. This is cosine pi over 2 plus theta e sub x plus this part cosine e sub y and e sub theta. It's cosine theta e sub y. Okay, this part is minus sine theta. So it becomes minus sine theta e sub x plus cosine theta e sub y. Okay, this is the answer to the practice 2.5. And also I explained uh, e sub r is expressed cosine theta e sub x plus sine theta e sub y. Okay, then we'd like to express the angular momentum in the polar coordinate. So r vectors is expressed uh, r times er because uh, unit vector. This is unit vectors e sub r. We have to multiply the r is a length r er. And the e sub r vectors is exactly equal to this one. Cosine theta e sub x plus sine theta e sub y. And if you consider derivative of r with respect to time, so this is dr dt then substitute this is here then derivative of this equations it becomes a derivative of r dot and this this terms here and derivative of this, also r is a function of t and also theta is a function of t you have to consider the derivative of theta here. This is actually equal to the e sub r. This is equal to the e sub theta. R vector dot is equal to r dot. This is not just the magnitude of the r times e r plus r theta dot e sub theta. So this corresponds to the motion vectors in these directions and the second terms 
correspond to the vectors in the rotation motion. Velocity vectors is composed of the two terms. Okay. Then, using the, this uh, vector velocities, we could express the angular momentum. This one. So this is a practice. Use the expression of the r and the r dot derived at this equation. So you can just substitute mu r e r e sub r cross r dot e sub r plus r theta dot e sub theta. Then mu r r dot e sub r plus e sub r plus r square theta dot e sub r cross e sub theta and as I explain the same vectors becomes zero okay and the e sub r e sub theta this is equal to the e sub z so it becomes mu r square theta dot e sub z Okay, so this is the answer to the, this practice. And then we'd like to express the Kepler's second laws. So we have already derived the angular momentum ex, ex, expressed the mu r square theta dot e sub z. The Kepler's second law said this particle is moving to new positions. This is r vectors plus dr vector. This is dr vector. Then Kepler's law said this area, this area is a constant. So if you take the same amount of the time of the dt's, so this area, dA, can be calculated. r plus dr is this length, and the height we have to calculate. Height is, uh, if you consider this triangle, r sine theta. This is r sine d theta. It's a height. And it, they, to calculate the area, you have to multiply the 1 over 2. So height times the base times uh, uh, 1 over 2. And the sine d theta, sine d theta is nearly equal to d theta when the d theta is much much smaller than 1. Then this is expressed 1 over 2 r square d theta. If you divide it by the dt in the both sides, this is da dt is 1 over 2 r square theta dot. So from the, this equation, magnitude of the l is equal to mu r square theta dot. So mu uh, from the here, r square theta dot equal l over mu. So you can substitute this form is here. Then dA dt is equal to the l over 2 mu. So we have explained l is a constant and the mu is constant. So l over 2 mu is constant. So we could derive the Kepler's second law using the universal law of gravitation and the Newton's laws.